Hello, welcome back to the show. We had a couple of weeks off. To be honest, I was just getting bored. Normally, I enjoy this kind of year, uh, this time of year, a bit of a bit of a break from football. Because when you do 60 or 70 matches a season, you see umpteen on TV. I think it refreshes your appetite. But there, there comes a time in midsummer, and we're bang there at the moment. What are we, June the 20th? When you just get a bit restless and bored, and you need a pick me up. And I, I can think of nobody better to uh, brighten things and make us more cheerful in the middle of the off season than uh, a guy who was and is a great entertainer both on and off the pitch that's why he's sitting there at the moment terry curran uh, good evening terry thanks again for coming in good evening alan and thank you for inviting me again no it's an absolute pleasure always to talk to you you know we used to spar back in the day didn't we when uh, you played for jack charleston at sheffield wednesday we had some interesting interviews in those times didn't we me and jack used to spar and you yeah. used to be referee <laughs> that's right yeah i did didn't i particularly one uh, snooker match on one occasion you remember that yeah, yes i do remember you remember that, yeah. that? You, you remember you won the bet by jack the way Russell. i was right again weren't i yeah, actually, you were. Jack was very sore about that. Oh. You know? That £5 bet you had yeah. about the rules of snooker. Yeah. And I was an innocent bystander, if you remember that. I was sitting there with my tape recorder. And he made you uh, phone up uh, to find out yeah. who, was, who, who, who was right and who was wrong. I did. I phoned Mike Watterson, the world snooker promoter, <laughs> didn't I? And the, you know the mistake I made? Instead of doing it privately, I thought, hey, I'm going to put this on air. So I rang Mike Watterson and we had it on air and he had, I told them, you know, in fact, I had a clip of you and a clip of Jack. I can't remember whether it was a free shot or not. And he adjudicated, didn't he, in your favour. Yeah. Jack was, do you know, Jack was furious. I know he was. He went absolutely ballistic at me. Get, I, mean, <laughs> I can tell you a few times when Jack was furious. <laughs> once throwing a punch at me, he made anything else. Did he? Well, I'm glad that he was furious at me down the phone. <laughs> yeah, because he was on the phone. <laughs> I was holding the phone there. Yeah, but you needed uh, information from Jack, didn't you? Well, to uh, be about fair, the team and everything else. I but did. Obviously, so you had to be careful with I, him. I know I heard by the back door that he was furious. I thought, I'm going to face the music here, <laughs> ring him up. And he went ballistic for about a minute. And then, you know what he's like? He just got out of his system. And he just said to me, right then, what can I do for you? The two managers I played with were Cluffy and, 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 and Jack. Yeah. Uh, when they... I had an argument with you, and um, after the argument had finished, it, we were just talking as normal, as yeah. though you hadn't been in an argument. No. And the one thing about Jack, he never, he never held grudges. No, that's never, brilliant. Never had, uh, held grudges. It's just as well that you didn't either, because I remember that interview that he did with me when he said, um, Terry Curran, every time he opens his mouth, his brains fall out. Now, that was a great clip. I used that on Radio Hammond back in the Great clip for you day. lot, for, 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 for press and in, in the, the media. Not so good for you, was it? No, because obviously they're trying to protect themselves. And yeah. when you're questioning the, 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 the coaching method, methods, how, how can they, how can they uh, get, get out of it? Because obviously some of the players will agree with me, some of the players will agree, uh, agree with Jack. You'd, so what they will do is, is throw something into belittle the player. You had obviously said something that I rankled with him. And he didn't agree with that. I don't remember what it was. That got me into bother as well, you know, because I, <laughs> I put that out. Jack had said it, and you, you have this judgment to make. You know, had it been a young manager, an experienced manager, I might have done him a favour and said, look, you know, what you said there, are you sure you want to say it? But Jack was big enough and ugly enough to look after himself, crying, crying loud. So I put it out, very entertaining. But you remember John Harris? Dear yeah. old John Harris, lovely G gentleman, John. Yeah. Don't bloom and say that, Jack. <laughs> yes, who never swore, who worked in the back room at Hillsborough, and he rang me up and said, Alan, son, Alan, son, really, you shouldn't be putting that out from, <laughs> from Jack. I said, I, I, I said to him what I said to you, I think he can look after himself. I don't think Jack was bothered, was he? No. 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 Well, and neither was go. I, because no. uh, it, it, it was an argument on, 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 on how we both differ in his football ways of playing. Yeah. And Jack's not playing, he's won everything. In fact, he's won the biggest prize in the world, the World Cup. Yes. So who am I to question him and how football <laughs> should be played? And, and that, because it's not, that, it's not that I want to argue with him. Oh. I just have a different philosophy of playing football. Yeah. I will, when, I, when I was bought by Brian Clough, I loved how he, uh, how he wanted his teams to play. And I loved playing that way of football. And to this day, I still love playing that way. But, but I, you know, with Jack, I still... Jack is one of the best guys you will ever, of anyone will ever meet. Yeah. You know, because he's one of the guys what wants to go in the pub, sit down, have a pint of Guinness, have a game at cards, or have a game at pool, at snooker, 
Great guy. No airs of grace on him. And like I said, he's won the biggest prize in world football. Well, he, was, he, he, he was quite direct with his tactics, but he got the best out of you, despite that. I tell you what, we'll come to those days a bit later because we're covering loads of crap. That was an unscheduled five minutes there. We, I had no idea we were going to have that conversation <laughs> going like that. We're going to talk about the owls now, the blades now. We're going to relive uh, in a short while what I still think, and he thinks I'm just uh, buttering him up here, what I still think is the best goal I've ever seen live. And it was in 1980 at Bramall Lane and you scored it. We're going to look at that. But just before we do... Our recent conversation on the phone was quite hilarious, wasn't it? Because I rang you, what, 10, 10 days ago or something to ask you to come in here. That's right, yes. OK. And we had f four or five minutes chatting. You Before thought, I realised, it were, it were you, Alan, and not yeah. Imre Varadi. You thought I was Imre Varadi? Yes. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd sent Imre a message uh, about a player. Um, a player had been released by this club. Yeah. And he's asked me if I could uh, try and find him a football club. Uh, and I was wanting some information from Inray, uh, but Inray uh, has got back to I thought he got back to me on another phone. Because uh, uh, I'd only just sent him that message, and I thought he were phoning yeah. him back up about it. How has he taken it that you thought... Uh, well, I am... Uh, 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 doesn't he know yet? No, he doesn't <laughs> know, but, but uh, he did send me the message back the following day. Yeah, because so. I, I was imagining you might be into the agency side of things now, because I know Inray is. Uh, but but you're not, are you? Uh, no. What well, are you actually doing these days? Well, my, my son's uh, obviously at Grimsby Town, and then I've got my other son, Tom, who uh, who jocks Maddie, him is his agent. So yeah. I should be helping Tom out. Uh, but it, it's Tom's. Who's, who's the agent? Who's the agent? Uh, and it'll be him we're making decisions, and but just asking for a bit of advice. Your you contacts know, within yeah. the game uh, yeah. help him. Uh, I'll help him, yeah. Yeah, and he's keeping an eye on you as we speak. He's sitting in the corner of the studio, Tom. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the fee that he was asking that's bothering me. I, 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 hope, he asked for enough, I hope he asked for enough from me, Alan. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he's going to pocket most of it. I think you're going to get 10%. Um, and your other son, you mentioned Jock. Now, uh, we'll have a little uh, picture of Jock here. I think he's 18 years old. Uh, there he is. Uh, and he, uh, he plays for Grimsby Town. Yes. He's got a first pro contract, I think. Yes. Yeah? Two-year contract with a year of options, so that's his first contract. And uh, he's doing OK. We are... Uh, pulling up any trees. Uh, I've been really pleased with him. Uh, I'm, I'm proud that he's got his first contract. But I think I think he's going to be uh, a big plus for Grimsby. Mm. And I think he'll be a big plus in football. I'm his dad. People say, well, you say that. But I'm not one of those, and you know I'm not one of those players, because if I didn't think he was any good, I wouldn't be taking up and down the motorway to, to football clubs and matches yeah. and everything else. You know, they've got to be good for me to, to want to be able to do that type of thing, even though they're my son. Midfield player? Attacking midfield player, I'd guess. Yeah, he is attacking midfield yeah. player, but Grimsby's played him as an older midfield, uh, older midfield player, and that's OK because the manager picks the team and he picks where he wants him to play. Mm. Uh, but I think he's a better player going forward. Mm. You know, he has got good feet and he will get goals. He will get mm. goals in him. Help or hindrance that you're his father? Bit of both. Uh, give him the advice if, uh, if he needs it. I go and watch him play, uh, so I'm not telling him what to do. Uh, after a game, I'll give him a bit of advice. I think, well, you, I think you should be trying that type of thing yeah. or try that, take a risk with that, you know. But uh, he's a level-headed kid, so um, I think uh, he'll do all right, Alan. OK. You had some glory days at Sheffield Wednesday, albeit that you joined uh, from a top-flight club and went down to the, the old third division, which is incredible, and we'll, we'll come on to that in a moment. Um, uh, Sheffield Wednesday now, um, and we'll talk about United as well. Um, how do you see it? Do you, do you see them very often? What are your, what, what are your, what are your thoughts? I get down I, on, I get down around about six games a season. Yeah. You know, uh, for the last few years, I mean, with Jock um, playing at Doncaster, and now he's at Grimsby. I would do some coaching at Doncaster, and then when he went to Grimsby, I'm, I'm backwards and forwards uh, going to watch him train or taking him to training, uh, and now he's playing. Well, when he was playing last season, you watch him. I can't give as much, but. I try and get about six, seven games a season uh, if and when I can. Mm. Um, but Bruce, it's obviously it's a big plus, you know. He's, he's played at the highest level, and he's had a lot of success in the championship. I mean, his, his record in, in, in the Premier League has not been bad. Obviously, a bit of relegation at, at Sunderland, but in, in general, he's done really well. So I think it'd be a big plus for Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. Yeah, he's had experience there in the Premier League at Hull. Um, 
uh, and at uh, and at Sun Birmingham. Sunderland and at Birmingham, Birmingham. yeah, who we yeah. took, who we took, took up. who we took to yeah. the Premier League. Um, I mean, you're, you're still your presence is still felt at Hillsborough quite regularly because whenever they win or if it's a particularly My good team. win, th team. there's your song as well. Singing the blues, you remember recording singing the blues back I in the day? I do. I just might try and get that back in charts. Yeah, get I mean, number one, I think that's do you know, I, th I don't think younger fans realise that that when that record's played at Hillsborough, singing the blues, right? It's you that's singing it. It's the old record, isn't it? It is, yeah. That's so right. He gets plenty of royalties still from that, or nothing at all. Alan Woods gets all the royalties. Again, I got ripped off. That's right, Jack said that I was brainless, and he's right, I was brainless. <laughs> yeah. Because they made all the money on the on, on yeah. the record. Did you know you could sing before that, or? I can't sing, Alan. It's <laughs> marvellous what they can do in the studio. Isn't it just? Mm. Isn't it just? Brilliant. But that must uh, that must give you quite a bit of pride when you when you hear that when you're at a game, does it? Or or do you do you get embarrassed and put your Coat collar off when, when I was away. when I was asked to do it, I was embarrassed to do it. Yeah. You know, and they wanted me to put in uh, the when uh, the Wednesday win United lose. And, and in our in my day when I was playing football, there was a lot of violence about, weren't there? Yes. And I didn't want to do that because obviously you're antagonising other supporters, and you know. So I didn't really want to do that. Do I get embarrassed about it now? I just laugh at it now. It's yeah. You're more older and wiser. And when you did it, of course, you didn't know that uh, Wednesday win United lose. You'd be playing for. Sheffield United, briefly. Briefly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about how that came about one day. Oh, you can do it now if you like. True. No, well, what, what had happened... You can do it now. I mean, you were a hero at Sheffield Wednesday. Just imagine if this transfer happened now. What would be the equivalent, say, Adam Reach? Let's just, just say that now. Uh, Adam Reach um, moves from Sheffield Wednesday to Sheffield United. This, by the way, this is fictitious. This summer for 10 million pounds, shall we say. Yeah, this is the, the level of, well, I think you moving is a, a level, possibly a level or two above that. No, uh, for 100,000 pounds, how on earth did that happen? Well, from... my contract was expiring. Uh, yeah. And um, what had happened was uh, I'd gone in, uh, Jack wanted to come in, Wanted me to go into his office and see, see him in office, but John Harris, gentleman John. Yes. Uh, so I goes into the office and there's no one in, and there's a few things on the table where I've seen Jack had had some windows put in his house and club would pay for it and this <laughs> and that other. And um, I said to Jack, I'd uh, I'm owing eight, uh, eleven thousand pound on my house, and yeah. I said to him, Well, you, uh, I'll take eleven thousand uh, pound. And you pay the tax, uh, pay the tax on it. It pays me house off because my brother wanted to buy a nightclub in right. uh, in uh, Shipley, Bernard. So uh, I thought, well, I'll sell the house, lend him the money to to get the the nightclub in Shipley, uh, and I'll get another house. It it it, it, it tells me another house. So Jack said, no, I'll give you eleven thousand, but we're not paying the tax on it. Right. So um, spent the club's money like his own. Yes. Well. It, one thing about him, he, he, well, you're right. He, he wouldn't buy a drink and he, 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 when we were all when we when yeah. we go all out together, would he? Wouldn't you buy know a packet of fags, that's for sure. So <laughs> I lost a few to him. <laughs> so uh, then I got a phone call from Reg Brearley at Sheffield United, mm. and uh, obviously I'm a Wednesday fan, and I've never I'm not disliked United, but I'm obviously I always want Wednesday to do well and, and not, yeah. not United to do well. And what happened? Reg had phoned me up and he said. Uh, would you come and play for us? And I said, how can I do that? How can I come and play for your age? When I, you know, this is my club, you know. Mm. He said, look, I'll look after you, bye, bye, bye. But like I said, I got my brother wanted to, to get this nightclub. So Reggie said, right, I'll give you 50,000 pounds, but 25 in your hand and 25 uh, wow. as an next grass here. Wow. And uh, 25 in my contract. Yeah. So then I says to Jack, look, I've been offered this deal. It's, and Jack said, Yes, I'm still not giving you paying the tax on it. So I said, okay, I'll go to United then. You won't go to United. You won't, they can't afford you. But you know, be this number of pounds and that number of pounds. That, but the tribunals had just come in then. Yes. So uh, the tribunal was the Victoria Hotel. Yes. And uh, I remember going in there. We, we uh, Jack came in. We uh, Bert McGee, the chairman, and the fee was fixed for hundred thousand pound. Mm. A lot of money there. You know, Jack Quite absolutely went ballistic. Yeah. But, but prior to that, Everton had offered five hundred thousand pounds when I was playing for for Sheffield Wednesday. And Jack turned it down because that was it. The, 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 yeah. got the letters from Everton and everything uh, at, at the tribunal. Well, yeah. and um, what had happened uh, once they set the fee at hundred thousand pounds. Yeah. 
Jack, absolutely. So when I get outside, he said to me, I'll pay that tax on it. I said, well, I've already promised them now. Well, what, what do you want me to do? You know. And at, and at first, I thought, well, I might change my mind in the morning. But when I got back home, mm -hmm. I walked into the house, and uh, my father-in-law, my ex-father-in-law, Frank Matthews, was on the phone. And when I got in, it was Arthur Cox on the phone. Mm -hmm. So Arthur Cox, I goes on speech to him, and he said, uh, look, the tribunals agreed to £100,000. We're willing to pay that. I'm happy at that, paying £100,000 for you. He said, what have they offered you? So I told him, he said, I'll treble that. Come wow. and play for us. He said, I'm signing Kevin Keegan. I'm going to play Wadlunt left. You won't right, Baisley and Keegan through the middle. Wow. I said, I've already promised Sheffield United. So, so, so Jack was right. I must have been brain dead, me, because, yeah. I, you know, well, to come out of first division and then to go and play for Cox and Keegan and all, play with Keegan and Waddle and all them, and I even turned that down. So it, it probably were, well, it, it weren't wrong, uh, Alan. No, it wasn't meant to be, that move to Sheffield United, quite clearly. But I tell you what, some player. Let's, let's go back now to April 1980. What was the, uh, the exact date? April the 5th, 1980, at Bramall Lane. I was there. Easter. It was the second, yeah, Easter. It was the second Sheffield derby of a memorable season in which the Owls got promoted. It was also the season of the Boxing Day Massacre with the 4-0 victory that you starred in uh, in December. But the return game at Bramall Lane was a lot closer. It was the game on Match of the Day and it featured, from this guy here, the goal that I consider still to be the best that I've ever seen live. Here he is. Karen, this time it's Cutbush at his back. And Sabella. Oh, he's got away from them. Three men around him, and he just came round in a wide arc, and no wonder he falls to his knees to take the applause of the Wednesday supporters. But the United supporters must be wondering how on earth he was allowed to go away. He came away in an arc, and when he was in space, he hit a right foot shot that was beating the goalkeeper from the moment that the ball was struck. Well, say what you like about Terry Curran. It cannot be denied that he's a character, and when he wants to, he can play. The inimitable Barry Davis with the commentary and those outwards that I was about to remind you of when you came in here tonight, but you said, oh, no, I know what he said, I know what he said. When he wants to, he can play. Backhanded compliment or what? How did you receive that? It's, it's, the, the problem with everything about this enigma about me, uh, if I would have got injured at Forest, who knows what would have happened to me because I was playing absolutely out of my skin for Nottingham Forest. Uh, and I got a, such a bad injury. Uh, it probably cost me in my career because it took me nearly two, uh, not two years, about 14, 15 months yeah. to not to worry about the leg. Even though I was a strong guy and I weren't frightened to play, as, as, as all players will tell you, when, when I played against him, they the couldn't fears. believe that I would always go back for more. Because in our day, they used to kick you up in the air. Yeah. And um, that, that goal, though, does it still fill you with excitement, tingle? Pride? Everything to do with Sheffield. When I, when I drive into Sheffield, it's still, I still get the tingles. Right. In part two, we're going to show that goal again, only with the sound off. And I'm going to ask you how on earth you scored from there, from, from that position, and how, and how you did it. Uh, but when he wants to, he can play. There was a kind of suggestion, he was hailing the goal, a kind of suggestion that you were a sort of a mood player. Well, uh, I've never been a mood player. The problem is, when in our day, they used to put man-to-man man -man marking. Yeah. And, and in my case, sometimes I'd have two or three men marking me right. when I got the ball. Yeah. I'd, I'd come round just straight away. Uh, As they were. And managers would, would tell people, Jack would turn around and say, right, Alan, I want you to kick so-and-so. Then you, once you've kicked him, Thomas, I want you to go and kick that same player. And then he'd, he'd retaliate to that and get booked. Uh, and then somebody else. And th the problem is, people are trying to stop you play football, Alan. Yeah. The other team are trying to stop you play football. So they'll either stop, stop you giving the ball through service yeah. or they'll stop you giving the ball uh, by putting a man on you. Yeah. You know, or fouling. Yeah. Uh, but when I look at my record, whether it's Forest, yeah. Everton, or Southampton, 
It's been consistent. We've yeah. always, every team I've played for, that's success. Eight seconds, you're being very consistent because you're saying such entertaining things that we've run out of time for part one. We'll be back for more in five. See you then. <laughs>